Welcome to Vidyalaka. This is Professor Nirali Arora and today in this lecture we will be discussing about a very important subject also known as software engineering. BSc IT students in the last three semesters you have learned imperative programming, object oriented programming and data structures. In this semester you will be learning an application of those three subjects also known as software engineering. So, before we proceed and let's understand what do you mean by the term software. Software is basically any computer program that provides functionality and performance and software engineering is made up of two terms software plus engineering. Now what is a software? So software is collection of executable codes. What is engineering? Engineering deals with development of, of products using well-defined scientific principles. So, let's combine these two terms and form a definition of software engineering. The software engineering is a branch associated with development of software product using well-defined scientific principles, methods, and procedures. In this lecture, we will be dealing with a very important concept of software engineering which forms the basis for all the software models is known as SDLC. So what is SDLC? SDLC stands for Software Development Life Science. A well-defined sequence of stages in software engineering to develop the intended software product is known as SDLC. That is each and every software product goes through these stages in reality. So let's understand these stages in a grassroots level using a banking application. Requirement gathering deals with collecting the requirements from the various stakeholders. For a bank project or an application who are the stakeholders? Definitely the bank officials and the customers. So taking requirements from them is a part of the requirement gathering stage. Example, these requirements are taken using interviews and questionnaires. Proceeding a little bit more ahead after requirement gathering, we have the feasibility study. Feasibility study basically checks whether all the constraints for a given software are satisfied or not. Now these constraints can be technical constraints, business constraints and financial constraints. Next is the system analysis. System analysis basically deals with creating a roadmap or a blueprint for a software project. Basically all the system constraints are checked in system analysis phase. A very important stage is the software design where the knowledge that has been inquired from requirement gathering to feasibility to system analysis are being combined together to form a kind of a design for a given software. And this is accomplished using two design models, either physical designs or the logical designs. Again, you'll be studying a lot about these designs in your forthcoming chapters. Next is coding. Students, right from semester one, you have been coding with respect to different subjects and here is where the basic software principle lies coding that is writing a clean piece of code for any given application now this code can be implemented either in java either in c++ or any programming language of the world and this model is uniform for any programming language of the world next stands for integration a given software module may be integrated with different modules that is either with a database or with the libraries. So integration basically deals with combining or integrating a given application with databases, libraries, etc. The entire part of integration takes place in this stage. Next is testing. So many errors that might have crept into need to be removed. So 
testing deals with removal of these errors, debugging of the errors. Again, there are different testing involved, alpha testing, beta testing, module testing, unit testing. We will be studying all these testing in a separate chapter called as testing. Next is implementation. Any given software product that has been implemented needs to be installed on user machine. So this entire process of installation on the user machine and checking out whether the given software works as per user's requirements or not is done in the implementation stage. And last but not the least, it is the maintenance. Once the software has been completed, the responsibility does not end up because the entire software has to be maintained at regular intervals. Secondly, a user is also provided with a documentation and a software is tested for its portability too. So the maintenance basically deals with updation of a given software. So students, this was the very vital part of your entire syllabus and if you find these lectures interesting, do not forget to visit our nearest Vidyalanka centers.